It's called a Digi Spark, and it's sold by Digi Stump, and it's this tiny little USB development board, and it was only a dollar, or they only are a dollar if you're willing to wait a whole month for them to come in from China, but off of eBay, I mean, but off of Amazon, you, I got five for thirteen dollars, and it came in two days with Prime. So, let me just open this up. It's got a caution for static, only authorized personnel. <laughs> okay, so I just pour that out, and there you go. That's what it is. It's pretty small. It's very tiny. It's based off the USB A tiny chip right here. Um, those are also like a dollar if you want to buy them with pins, like the actual IC. And yeah, it's got its own digital inputs, digital outputs, analog. It's it's got a whole lot of features. I printed out a diagram right here, but this is what it can do. I'll put that in the description. You can do I2C communication. You can have all these analog inputs, outputs, digital inputs, outputs. You can you can basically hook anything up you want to it. It's an Arduino, basically. A tiny, tiny USB Arduino. And what's even cooler is it's got an HID interface capabilities, which means human interface device, where you can actually plug this into a computer and it'll act like a keyboard or a mouse. So let me show you that. So first, I just wanted to show that the DigiSpark can work as a normal development board. So I'm just going to do a quick blink example. Change this to pin 2 for all of these. And the interesting thing about uploading this is when you, when you go to upload the code, it does this thing where it says, don't plug in the board before you click upload or else it'll mess up and after this progress bar is finished it'll say now plug in the device and I'll do that and then the code will upload okay so now you take the digi spark you just programmed and Oh, quick side note, if you don't know how to program it or you don't have the tools on your computer, I'll be covering that in a little bit, so don't worry, this is just a demonstration. And I'm just going to take this breadboard and a couple jumper wires and this LED, shoot, and this LED, and basically I'm going to power the digi spark with this portable charger turn that on okay and from there since i set the pin to 2 let's take a look at our diagram see where pin 2 is it's right there so third one up from the bottom count that out one Okay, put pin two. Ugh. So yeah, the thing with the portable charger is it's a bit cumbersome, but um, you can you can power the board through these pins here. You can give it five volts or not. Yeah, five volts in and ground, and you can actually power that without having a big block of a charger right next to it. So. Put that there, and the ground is right there, I think. Is it? Yeah, G and D. Okay. So, put that there. And, keeps coming out. And we'll put the LED, the long leg, the cathode, goes to the pin. And the anode touches... Hey, and there you go. Like I said earlier, 
HID is human interface device, so like a keyboard or a mouse. And the DigiSpark has one built in, so let me just pull that up. And um, I was looking through the examples under DigiSpark, and there's just there's so many capabilities with it. It's crazy. I'm looking here, it's like GPS. They had GPS, Wi-Fi, cell phone, infrared. You can you can really do some stuff with this small board. Control motors, even as its infrared library, like the IR hijacker. Man, I can make one with one of these. Um. Yeah, joystick for games, keyboard. So this is the HID stuff, keyboard and mouse here. That's what I'm going to be showing. So let's take a look at that. So basically you just print line under this thing to whatever text you want. I think you can also do ASCII characters. Um, and yeah, so let's just try that out upload the code make sure your digi sparks unplugged before you upload and where is mine okay plug in the device now there it goes so now it's done and we'll see what happens just give it a second to initialize there it goes starts typing And I'm not even hitting the keyboard. I'm sure you would be able to hear that. Cool. So let's do one. The mouse. Just unplugged it. Let's try this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so it moves around and it clicks, looks like. Right clicks. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's undoing. All right, cool. So what else? What I wanted to show you with the keyboard functionality is people have taken this this ability and they've done what they call create payloads which is like little things that the DigiSpark can type in to the computer to have it do something evil so they coined the term bad USB you can also do this with an Arduino Pro Micro which I'll be doing a video on later and there's also there's also a $50 USB drive that does basically the same thing and the internet's crazy about the DigiSpark which is only a dollar and the Promicro which is only three dollars which can do basically the same thing so I'm gonna show you an example of that now if my computer ever decides to cooperate <sighs> I think the DigiSpark screwed up my mouse. Because now every time I left click, I right click. <laughs> my gosh. So let me. There we go. Okay, so this is what I was talking about the USB rubber ducky. And it can execute what they call payloads, which you type things in really quickly. And you'll see here my first payload. And basically, what this one is doing is it's opening up notepad and typing into notepad so it presses the windows key and types in notepad.exe so basically people created converters so that they could do that with the digispark and the rubber ducky has its own language called ducky script which can be easily converted this is an example 
you can easily convert that into DigiSpark code. And that will run through the Arduino. So it took me a little while to find this particular converter. So I recommend you bookmark this. I, went, I spent hours searching the internet. They have these. These you download. But they don't do DigiSpark. They only do Arduino Pro Micro. So this one does DigiSpark. But you need Linux. And this, this is the one you'll probably find. But as you can see, there's no DigiSpark drop down. So that's a bust. And yeah, I finally found it right here. And this, this is what you want. So for us, I want to show you a quick payload called. Yeah, so here's a list of payloads that Hack5, a hacking company, put up. And I like this one. These, Some of these are pretty. Um, I guess destructive they they do some bad stuff I mean fork bomb reverse shell that's that's my interpreter you can get a interpreter shell through the DigiSpark which is pretty cool I'll do I'll do a video on that later and I like this one called the hot dog wallpaper because it's probably the least harmless of them all and I'll just take that and stick it in here compile copy that paste that in here and I've noticed that if the delays are too short it'll actually hang up the payload so I'm just gonna make these a little bit longer this is in milliseconds, so it's practically nothing. It's practically can't tell the difference. So I saw this video a few weeks ago, and people took an Android phone and an OTG cable, which means on-the-go cable. So basically you can plug in like a flash drive in your phone or whatever. Gives it a USB port. And someone wrote a payload. I think I saw it right here this one yeah and um, basically it just it tries every passcode on the lock screen that it can and you can get into an Android phone with a four digit passcode in 16 hours guaranteed so let's say you find a phone on the street and it's got and it's locked then you can just plug in one of these digi sparks and it'll unlock it for you in less than a day. So that's just one use. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this hot dog. And we'll see what happens. So in preparation for the hot dog, I closed out everything. And I picked out this cool background of a tiger. Looks pretty neat. So I'll go ahead and plug in the DigiSpark. And I just wanted to say that it runs really quickly. All its code just it executes super fast and you'll see that and my hands and mouse are off the keyboard so if I was typing you would be able to hear it so here goes just give it and there it goes And voila, the background has changed. In order to properly set up the DigiSpark, you'll want to go into File Preferences. And this down here, you'll click a little window. And this URL, which I'll put in the description, you want to take that and you'll just paste it into this box. If you have other boards, leave those there, but I deleted mine. And if you already have one boards in there, you can just paste it like that. So yeah, you want to click OK once you have that. And OK again. And then you'll want to go into Tools, Board, Boards Manager. And then search, search up Digi. And this is the one you want to install. 
you just click install and it'll download it'll download some board preferences just give it a second and it'll just run that stuff once that is done you'll be able to see all the examples for DigiSpark and when you're programming the board this particular DigiSpark if, an if it's another one you'll pick something else but you'll go tools and then I always do generic DigiSpark also another thing if this doesn't work programming it throws some kind of error then you want to download drivers for this and I'll put a link to those in the description and you just run an installer it's pretty self-explanatory and it'll install the drivers for the board and mine works without it yours might not so I'll put that there what is taking so long okay there it goes. Installation complete. Even though I click cancel, but and these boards should now pop up. This is this is the one I always use default. And yeah, you'll have all your examples here. You will be able to do keyboard. So yeah, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.